ಮುದ್ದುಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತರ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಲೆಕ್ಟಿಕ್ ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಗೀತ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಥ್ರೂಔಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತರ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿವ್ಲಿ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಾಸ್ ತಿರುವಾರೂರ್ ದ ಏನ್ಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಚೋಲಾಸ್ ಹೌಸಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸಸ್ ಡೆಡಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಶಿವ referred to as vanmika natha the swayambhu lingam is believed to have been worshiped by mahavishnu and mahalakshmi initially this temple also houses the most celebrated form of shiva as tyagaraja swami steeped in history this temple is a grand gallery of art and architectural excellence the primary shrine of vanmika natha is at the center of the main campus The four corners of the second prakara houses four interesting shrines all dedicated to Shiva referred to by different names. To the southeast is the celebrated shrine of Shiva as Achaleshwara, the one who is fixed, the one who is permanent. Interestingly, this shrine finds a reference in Tevaram hymns as Arur Araneri. this by itself is an individual temple around the 10th century the shrine was reconstructed in stone by chembiyanma devi an enterprising woman from the royal family of the cholas she was in fact the guiding light for raja raja chola the temple is ornamented with beautiful sculptural depiction of shiva in his varied forms known for its art and architectural elegance this shrine stands alone within the main campus the dikshitar kriti on the achaleshwara sannidhi is sada chaleshwaram bhavayeham in the raga bhupala set to aditala sada chale ಶ್ವರಂ ಭಾವೇ here at uh, achaleshwaram the immovable achalam achalam so chalam is something that which moves that which waves here it all stands still it's fixed it's eternal it, it does not move so achaleshwara as he is called and dikshitar says sadha achaleshwaram bhavaye aham ai aham meditate upon achaleshwara always the always there you know the sadha is pretty significant based on the purana and the tatva of achaleshwara he is one of the panchalingas inside the campus of tiruvarur temple tiruvarur undoubtedly is considered to be the capital city mm. of shaiva traditions the mm. traditional shaiva system here the faith system here and uh, this is a temple which is referred to in all the 12 tirumurais and the maximum number of tirumurai padigams are dedicated to this temple and here the most popular shrine is of course that of vanmikanathar and tyagaraja swami but apart from vanmikanathar shrine in the second corridor we have these four shrines one each in one of the corners of the second corridor and here in the southeast corner at the southeast corner we have uh, swami as achaleshwara achaleshwara valmikeshwara siddheshwara hatakeshwara and, and anandeshwara and muthu swami dikshitar has composed compositions and 
composed kirtanams in each of these of the panchalingas here at Tiruvaru, which also happens to be the birthplace of Muduswami Dekshitar, Shama Shastri and Tyagaraj Swami. So Tiruvaru's association with Muduswami Dekshitar is a, is a long one because he was born here. His father, of course, Ramaswami Dekshitar had a very great role to play uh, in the temple traditions. Setting up of the music traditions. Temple tra yeah. The music traditions of the temple. I think though he has traveled far and wide, his heart was always with Tyagaraj. In fact, the sheer volume of compositions that we see, the number of kirtanams that Muduswami Dekshita has composed on this kshetra and on the multitude of sannidhis inside this magnificent temple complex, uh, it's very evident that he was smitten by Tiruvaru. Like how Shiva is smitten by the love for uh, Girija, as Girija he says, Moham. Girija Moham. So, Chamatkara Puragaeham, Girija Moham. Moham. Chamatkara Puram is one of the many names of Tiruvaru. So, Tiruvaru is as such referred to by that name in the Padigams of the Nayan Mars. And then we have the Puranas, uh, where several episodes are centered around this Kshetra. And so, each of it fetches a new name to the Kshetram, like Viti Vitangam, Kalishala Puram, Kandapuram, Tyagapuram, Kamala Nagaram, Shri Puram. And one in that long list of uh, different names is Chamatkara Puram. The reason for, or the Purana behind uh, this name is detailed out by Dikshitar in the Charanam. So, Achaleshwara is this long time resident of Chamatkarapuram. Chamatkarapura Keham, the Griham of Achaleshwara is Chamatkarapuram. And he is identified as the one who is in love always with Girija, or the one who was born to the king of mountains. Giriraja Kanyam, as she is called, Parvataraja Kumari. Parvati. So, Swami here is in love with Parvati. Interestingly, this shrine hasn't got a separate shrine for Devi, like how it is in the case of other popular temples. So, here a beautiful bronze image of Devi is installed right next to Swami uh, at the Ardha Mandapam and Swami is in the Garbhagraham. The proximity of Swami and Devi is uh, beautifully constructed and so probably Dikshitar wants to emphasize that right at the opening uh, level of the composition. So, he identifies Shiva or describes Shiva to be uh, smitten uh, by the love for Girija, Girija and, Moham. And in fact, we all get smitten by Muduswami Dikshita's handling of Bhupala. In the very opening of this composition, we find a Swarakshara, which of course is a one of the many hallmarks of Muduswami Dikshita's Kirtanams. Sa, sa, da, that's a Swarakshara and it opens with this magnificent Swarakshara and it goes on to elaborate a Bhupala. Now, Bhupala by itself is an ancient raga. It finds references in many ancient treatises. By the time Venkatamakhin writes the Chaturdandi Prakashika somewhere in the 18th century, Bhupala has always, Bhupala has already been a Prasiddha Mela. So, when he lists 19 Purva Prasiddha Melas. Melas that were in existence and that were popular even at the time of Venkatamakhin and prior to that. He lists Mukhari, Samavarali, Gupala in that order. And he attributes the number 8 to it. And he mentions that in the theoretical possibility of 72 Melas, Gupala would be the 8th Mela or a name giver rather. Now we can get into a separate discussion about the the definitions of Mela, uh, Mela Adhikara, Raganga Raga, Mela Karta in a probably in a separate discussion. discussion. <laughs> but coming back to Bhupala, Bhupala was a Purva Prasiddha Raga. But over time, today as we know it, Bhupala is a Upanga Janya Raga of the ninth Raganga Raga. Dhuni Bhinna Sharja, according to the Sangeeta Sampradaya Pradeshini of Subramadikshitas. Dhuni Bhinna Shajja, also known as Bhinna Shajja. The Dhuni was added as a prefix to make it compliant with the Katapayadi Sutra. So, Bhupala is listed under Bhinna Shajja, Dhuni Bhinna Shajja. And it is an Audava Audava Upanga Janirag. Audava Audava meaning five swaras in ascent, five swaras in descent. Mm, Sariga Padasa Shuddharshabha Sadharana Gandhara Panchama Shuddha Daivata Swaras. The Sadhana Gandhara Swara is a very interesting one. 
Bhopala is supposed to be rendered according to Subramanian Diksha with Sadhana Gandhara only. He quotes the shloka of hmm. Muddu Venkatamakhin, where Muddu Venkatamakhin says that Bhopala is a raga which is supposed to be sung early in the morning, and if it is sung early in the morning properly, it would bestow auspicious boons to oh, the mere singing of it early in the morning. Hmm. So Subramanian Diksha connects that with some unfortunate trends that he sees at his times. Subramanian Diksha notates the. Subramanian Diksha documents Sangeet Sampradaya Parashni in the late 19th century, hmm. presumably, and he says, "In these times, I am hearing Bhopala being rendered, unfortunately, with the wrong Gandhara, the Antara Gandhara, the higher wow. the." And he questions as to how a rendition of such a raga incorrectly would render auspicious boons. For it to render auspicious boons, it has to be rendered correctly with the Sadhana Gandhara. So these five swaras in ascent and descent. In fact, this ascent also we find the dhatu swara prayogas. It's the ending word of the Pallavi, Girija Moham, uh, like you mentioned at the beginning, he is smitten by Girija, and we must highlight that we really fall in love with the Bhupala that Mudhusam Rikshar presents, especially the dhatu swara prayoga that he uses for this place. Girija Moham. Gapa gada pasa dari. He climbs up, a uh, giri. I mean, goes up that way. <laughs> giri jam ho. Sada shrita kalpa vriksha samuham. Commences from the Madhistai Shadja. Sada Shrita. The same Sada occurred in the Pallavi in the opening phrase, but in the Tarasthai. Sada was the Pallavi. On the Pallavi. Sada. The Da lends the Dwiti Akshara Prasa and also happens to be a pivotal note in this raga. Bhopal. Sada Shrita Kalpa Vriksha Samoham. Interestingly, Dikshita refers to Achaleshwara as a Kalpa Vriksham. Not just one, but a samuham, a, a grove of kalpa vriksham, a garden full of kalpa vriksham. The deva lokam, indra lokam, has one kalpa vriksham, which by itself is very powerful. You request it, you pray to it. Anything that you request is granted. Any boon that you want is granted. He is a kalpa vriksham too, but when you say call him as one kalpa vriksham, it means like you know you are comparing him with after all a tree in indra lokam. So he is a groove, an entire forest full of kalpa vriksham. If one tree can give you all that you want, imagine him; he can give you much more. The next line is also about surrender and how Achaleshwara grants boons to people who surrender. But here it is the devata samuham, the clan of the devatas, the celestials, because he is Mahadeva, Devati Devan. So for all the devatas, he is the leader, the lord for them. Sarnagata, Sarnagata, Devata Samuham. Yes, people who have sought refuge in Him, who have come here, who have prayed to Him. Interestingly, many episodes in the Puranas associated with Trivaru has a reference to occasions where the Devatas came here, took refuge here in Trivaru, and also the Sai Rakshi Puja, which is very special here at Trivaru, has a reference that the Devas, all the celestials, starting from Indra, because he is the one who prayed to Tyagaraja. They are all waiting at the thousand pillared hall, the Devashri and Mandapam, to waiting to listen to the first bell, which is an alert for them to rush in to have a darshan of Sai Rakshay. 
So they are all here. The devatas are always here. So to them, he becomes the kalpa vriksham too. The same word samuham occurs at both the places. Both the lines. Kalpa vriksh yes. samuham, devata samuham. Devata samuham. Then we go to the madhima kala sahitya. ಉದಾಜಕೃತ ನಾಮಧೇಯವಾಹಂ ಚಿದಾನಂದಾಮೃತ ಪ್ರವಾಹಂ ಉದಾಜಕೃತ ಅಗೇನ್ ದ ಇದು ಅಕ್ಷರ ಪ್ರಾಸ ಉದಾಜಕೃತ ನಾಮಧೇಯವಾಹಂ ಚಿದಾನಂದಾಮೃತ ಪ್ರವಾಹ ಉದಾಜ್ಯಕೃತ ನಾಮಧೇಯ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಜಲೇಶ್ವರ ನಾಮಧೇಯ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗೇನ್ ಬೈ ಅನ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ವೇರ್ ವಾಟರ್ becomes ghee udajya so water becomes ghee and this is a very beautiful reference to one of the nayanmars who was a resident of uh, a place called ema peru which is in the outskirts of tiruvaru this probably should have happened around the 6th century because upper who was active almost the same time refers to this incidents from the life history of naminandi adigal one of the nayanmars who was a resident of a town called ema peru which is a quiet village today the outskirts of tiruvarur he was a regular visitor here he comes to tyagaraja swami prays to vanmeganatha and he visits the temple on a daily basis one fine evening when he was here visiting the shrine of achaleshwara he saw that the only lamp lit there is already flickering and the, the ghee in it was just getting over so the lamp would be put off any time yeah so he was worried about it uh, a shrine without a lamp is not a good sign so uh, he had to go back to his village to fetch a uh, key so he thought an easy way would be to request the neighbors in the temple probably in the uh, 5th 6th century the shrine wasn't as big as we see it today much smaller it should have been so he runs to the houses in front of the temple but unexpectedly that was the time when the jain tradition the tamil speaking jains and buddhists were pretty popular in tamil nadu and they had this tendency to occupy places in and around shaiva temples and cause a lot of hindrance to because that gets recorded in many episodes in history so when naminandi adigal ran to one of the houses knocked at the doors and asked them for help they mocked him literally mocked him they said like you call your god to be the one who can balance a goblet of fire in his hand and he dances what difference will one lamp make and one other person gave him an idea actually he says he again tried to mock him telling that you know when your god can make so many miracles happen performs all these miracles maybe he just carry a handful of water from the well the sacred well and that might be good enough to burn the lamp taking this as a clue naminandi adigal prays to swami and shekhar gives us a reference about a well which was very close to the shrine of achaleshwaram which is probably identified as the sangatirtham which is inside the campus next to the thousand pillared hall so naminandi adigal manages to fetch a handful of water from the well pours it in the lamp and the lamp burns so this miracle happened here and by that swami gets the name achaleshwara the nama and the fame the name and the fame for this swami is by this episode and then we go to chidanandamrita pravaham chidananda starts from the tarastarishwa the highest note in this section in the anupulvi section because it's the bliss of absolute consciousness which is up above there so if you see the ending syllables and notes you have the hum syllable it is used sadashrita kalpa vriksha samuham sharanagata devata samuham udajakrita namadheya vaham chidananda amrita pravaham the hum i think starting from the pallavi the first line of the pallavi uh, and the verses in uh, the madhyama kala style hum. everywhere it gets over with hum and gets attached to sadha chaleshwaram so that by itself becomes hum sam can you just sing that line for me the last line and the pallavi chidananda amrita pravaham sada there you have hamsa the hamsa mantram which is so specific to tiruvaru the most celebrated mantram in the upanishads whose representation is tyagaraja swami he carries the hamsa mantra on his chest similarly the way the raga flows in the sanupallavi is also interesting if you see there is a the last syllable in every section is an ascending order so sada shrita kalpa vriksha samuham pa sharanagata devata samuham da udajakrita namade yavaham sa chidananda amrita pravaham ri so it's pada sari 
सतेश्वरम चमत्कार भूपलादि प्रसाद करणनी पूर्ण मखानिंदम चमत्कार भूपलादि प्रसाद चमत्कार भूपालादि प्रसाद कर्ण निपुण महालिंग चमत्कार स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द गांधार स्वर ग ग ग सुब्रम दीक्षित एज बी डिस्कस द वेरी आउटसेट मेक्स द पॉइंट टू री इनफोर्स दैट द गांधारा इज सपोज टू बी द साधारण गांधारा फॉर यू टू गेट द ऑस्पिशियस बूंस फ्रॉम दिस राधा हियर ऑफ कोर्स वी हैव चमत्कार भूपाल अ ट्रेडिशनल historical uh, account it is uh, chamatkara as a name uh, he, it, it refers to a king a supposed king and uh, so he is uh, to be crowned but he suffers from an ailment he is suffering from leprosy so as the tradition goes a king who is ill a king who is undergoing such ailments cannot be crowned as a he cannot be crowned so he'll be in line only so this particular king chamatkara is directed to go on a pilgrimage he visits many shrines and takes bath in several sacred uh, rivers and finally he is directed to tiruvaru he comes here the land of miracles the land of surprises he prays to swami shiva blesses him he helps him get cured of the leprosy that he was suffering from and he is uh, again like back to his form but here dikshitar I, i see two interesting references one is about the mahalingam shiva being uh the akriti the form is just massive imposing you you actually feel like you know i should surrender to him kind of a feel and uh, when we visit achaleshwaram when you see swami he is he occupies the entire space and he's just full of the garbhagraham and so dikshitar gives that clue also as mahalingam the akriti which is just massive and the second interesting aspect is uh, referring to shiva as someone who is uh, good with you know blessing with what you want the nipunatvam or the proficiency in blessing you with what you want uh, interestingly like how the city of tiruvarur the town of tiruvarur has uh, many names tyagaraja swami also has several names one of which is takkarku takkan this particular name has somehow been uh, uh, an aspect of interest to the 12th century chola kings who patronized the temple so much so that this name alone is inscribed on several columns of the thousand pillared hall the name takkark takkan in 12th century chola font script is there inscribed on these columns and that means the one who blesses you with what you deserve what you need what you want and here the prasada karana nipuna the nipunatvam he blesses you with what is best for you he gives you what is best for you i mean a 12th century name just casually being brought inside a composition fitting in a perfectly fine uh, traditional account uh, with respect to achalesham and couched in a wonderful bhopal because prasad sad suraksha again bhopal ragamutra plus pa suraksha prasad sad pallavi starts with sad anu pallavi sad shrit charanam we have chamatkara bhopalati prasad chaya rahita दीप प्रकाश गर्भगृह मध्यरंग सो गर्भगृह मध्यरंग राइट हियर एट द श्राइन अचलेश्वरा वॉज हियर इवन बिफोर द अरेवल ऑफ द किंग जस्ट दैट स्वामी गेव हेम अ दर्शन ऑफ अ दीपम स्तंभम अ ग्लोइंग कॉलम ऑफ फायर विच डज नॉट कास्ट अ शैडो बिकॉज कास्टिंग अ शैडो इज लिमिटेड टू द वर्ल्डली बींग्स द अर्थली बींग्स सो द दीप स्तंभम विच अपियर राइट हियर इन द गर्भगृह 
center of the garbhagriham center of the garbhagriham which is like a stage <laughs> garbhagriha madhya rangam there this deepa stambham was devoid of any shadow so he describes it in the second line that is in the panchama madhya rangam pa the panchama is the center of the raga swara <laughs> and the gandhara of course the ga is prevalent all throughout chaya ga pa chamad ga all in fact in the charanam uh, we have the gandhara occurring quite liberally as a starting note of the musical phrases chaya rahita deepa prakash garbhagriha madhyaranga so there is no shadow of doubt <laughs> on the authenticity of this bhopala and the beauty of this bhopala samast dukha చరణం గోస్ ఆన్ టు సమస్త దుఃఖాది హేతు భూత సంసార సాగర భయ భంగం దర్ ఇస్ బ్యూటిఫుల్ స్వరాక్షర దర్ సంసార సాగర భయ భంగం సంసార సారి సాగర సాగగ వెన్ యు ట్రై అండ్ అనలైజ్ టు ఫైండ్ అవుట్ ద రూట్ కాజ్ ఫర్ ఆల్ ద ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ దట్ వీ ఫేస్ ద ద వరీస్ ద మిసరీస్ దట్ ఇస్ సినెనమస్ విత్ దిస్ మెటీరియల్ వరల్డ్ it is generally zeroed down to one word it's called that is samsara the nature of samsara is to cause all this trouble so samasta dukkaadi hetu if you ever analyze what is the hetu or the cause or the root cause for all your problems here it is nothing but samsara that's how philosophy takes it up that's how the scriptures discuss it so dikshitra again just goes on to say that is there the samsara is there it is after all its nature to cause all the trouble and generally samsara is compared with a a sea a vast ocean sagara sagara samsara sagaram as it is called so it doesn't have a boundary line it is just wide once dropped in between somewhere you will have to make your way through the mighty tides and the rough waves though it's an ocean you find on to this support and that the support keeps changing you will you you are forced to detach from itself there is one person who can be a permanent solution here the one person who can save you from this tremor one person who can help you out of this uh, very fearful concept of samsara sagaram and he is none but achaleshwara one who is steadfast achala exactly so he is fixed yeah he is fixed so he can help you wade through these waves and uh, dikshit provides us a, a a truly beautiful janta swara passage there going all the way to shajja samsara సాగర భయ భంగం గగ ప పద దస గోయింగ్ ఆల్ ద వే టు ద షడ్జ ఫ్రమ్ దేర్ బిగిన్స్ ద డిసెంట్ శ్యామ దమో పరత్యాది సంయుక్త సాధుజన హృదయ సరసి జంగం రిమార్కబుల్ బ్యూటిఫుల్ ఫ్రేస్ ఇన్ గోపాల శ్యామ దమో పరత్యాది 
we must mention that in the telugu edition of the sangeetha sampradaya pradarshini it is given as shamada mopa vrittyadi uh, but i guess we are choosing to interpret it as shamada mopa ratyadi swami becomes this bee hovering over a sarasija bringam as he says sarasija means again lotus so shiva becomes this bee that goes around a lotus but where is this lotus what is the garden that is where he says sadhu jana krutaya sarasija bringam sadhu so who are the sadhus what is the benchmark what are the qualities yeah so that is where dikshitar again quotes from the upanishads sama dhama uparityadi sama dhama uparity and more so this list is what is given to us as shat sampat six qualities that one should cultivate or it is not very consciously done it just happens in the process of a philosophical seasoning all these six qualities are brought in and this seasons the individual so the first of the list of six qualities here is sama which is control of inner self the mind then you have dhamma which is control of the senses because the winning over the senses is a process by itself probably the biggest challenge in your uh, ladder to spiritual success and because they are very distracting and uh, so that's the nature of the senses so you'll have to win over it then comes uparati and this list goes on so dikshitar says sama dhamma paratyadi samyukta so uh, the collection of all these six senses together once somebody achieves all of this which leads you to a level of samadarshana you see everything with the same eyes there is there is no difference there is no difference between pain and pleasure there is no difference between good and bad so that level of a uh, spiritual maturity one attains he becomes a sadhu and the hridaya kamalam in him blossoms and that is where swami comes there as a bee and stays there for long and the imagery of the lotus extends as a segue into the madhyama kala kamala vijaya kara vidhrita kurangam karunarasa sudhar nava tarangam it starts again with the gandhara swara in fact throughout the charan vifisi chamatkar gaga chaya rahita gapa again the gandharam samast gapa pa kamala vijaya kara vidhrita kurangam ಕರುಣಾರಸುಧಾರಣ i think there is a very conscious usage of uh, lotus as a concept here as a source of inspiration tiruvarur has these two motives recurring starting from the tevaram period the hamsa and kamala so these two are like probably the most prominent concepts here and uh, of course this is kamala nagaram kamala alayam uh, devi is kamalambika so the lotus is in there i think this is the best of the lines i would say uh, going very parallel to the upanishad quote here Kamala Vijayakara Vidruta Purangam. Purangam. So, we all know that Shiva's iconography involves an antelope, a deer, that sits very gracefully balancing itself on his upper left hand. So, the deer there sits only on two legs. The other two legs are already up in air. It might jump any moment. So, the deer there actually personifies our mind, which is as fast or even much faster than the deer. it 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 is highly distracted the, the the way the deer looks at things around the the movement of its eyes it's it's just quick fast it goes from one place to another in the next one second similar to that our thought process the mind keeps moving from one thing to another and it takes it becomes a challenge for it to stay concentrated on something to sit with concentration on something to control the mind sama which he said becomes easy when you come in the shadow of swami that is when the deer that runs so fast is caught in his attention and likes to stay put up right there so our heart which is also quick and fast gets itself controlled under his presence a restraint restrained there in the next line again a reference to the ocean comes in just that this is not like the samsara sagaram it is not uh, causing any tremor or a fear in us this is an ocean of compassion karunarasam an ocean full of karuna compassion which is nothing but a personification of shiva that ocean is fearing but this ocean is very welcoming in the ocean of compassion 
he comes out as a wave of sudha or ambrosia that hits you slowly and gently and the musical phraseology is is fascinating there karuna rasa sudhar navatarangam The wave motion probably well, as it hits you, the one could look at wave. When one one could look at it like that, I guess, for students of music. <clears throat> the next line goes to Kamale Shavinuta Vrsha Bhatu Rangam. What fascinating exploration of Bhopala. The the jumping movements Vrsha Bhatu Rangam. Kamalesha Vinuta Vrishabhaturangam. This is again a part of the Stala Purana. Kamala is another name for Mahalakshmi, the one who is seated on a lotus. And so she is Kamala. Kamalesha becomes the Lord of Kamala who is Mahavishnu. So Mahavishnu is believed to have prayed here along with Mahalakshmi to Vanmi Kanata. And hence the name Kamala Puram or Kamala Nagaram also because she uh, underwent a penance here. she may she meditated upon swami along with mahavishnu to be blessed with a progeny manmata was after all born here in trivarur so kamalesha vinuta the one who is prayed to by kamala and her isha which is mahavishnu the temple where mahalakshmi and mahavishnu prayed to is where swami comes out as the one who is seated on a rishabha rishabha turangam and this again strikes a chord with upper tevaram where he very specifically says Tiruvarur was so fascinating that Swami lost the interest in being a resident of Indralokam and came down here. Had he been there, he would have enjoyed the pleasure of riding the Airavanam, the celestial elephant of Shiva. But giving up that just in case to bless us, he comes down as Kyaga Raja, the king of all sacrifices, sacrificing all this pleasure, riding a bull to Tiruvarur. So again, the Vrishabha Thurangam becomes a very specific case in in Tiruvarur. and this kirtanam concludes with a what could be called a fitting finale of bhopalam again plentiful with the dhatu and these vakra passages uh, notes that skip now phrases that skip a couple of notes kamala vadana sari sa pa ga pa kamala vadana guru guhantarangam gada pada gari ga sari these phrases for seekers and students of music form the seeds uh, for manodharma singing whether it is alapana nerval tana swaraprastara or so on it is these phrases that we inherit from these lovely compositions kamala vadana guru guhantarangam again we find a reference to kamala going by the meaning again i think this would be the fitting finale to such an elaborate composition here dikshitar describes or discusses the reward that one gets the blossoming of lotus that he has been talking about he gives it the form the shaiva tradition says that subrahmanya or guru guha is the ultimate essence of shiva gnana so dikshitar being such a staunch shaivite praising tyagaraja so much here brings in the final reference where he says the inner self or the inner gnana the atma gnana comes out as subrahmanya that glowing goblet of fire which is again the personification of atma gnana so here the inner appearance of subrahmanya with a face of a fully bloomed lotus is referred to kamala vadana guru guhanta rangam vadanam is the face the face that is like that of a lotus blossoms inside and that is nothing but the atma gnanam the ultimate gnana which is in the form of guru guha or subramanya again in tiruvarur it is a well known fact that the tyagaraja swami's iconography is very very unique wherein though it is a soma skanda form with shiva sharing the throne with uma and skanda in between we only get to see the face of the divine face of shiva and uma skanda is particularly hidden through ornamentation jewelry and flowers we never get to see skanda but for a couple of hours twice a year so that happens in the month of margali arudra nakshatram and panguni uttaram day so those two days are special that is when the pada darshanam happens so for the shiva shakti tatvam the end result is nothing but skanda the gnanam so for people who have meditated upon shiva gets the visualization of skanda happening on that day so that is again brought in here as the inner gnanam the atma gnanam which appears as shiva gnanam or skanda himself 
with the face of a fully blossomed lotus flower. Kamala Vadana Guru Guhanta Rangam. And through this Kirtana, Buddha Swami Dikshitar creates a Kshetra filled with mythological references, historical references, references to this land of Tiruvarur and also gives us the ruler of that land, which is musically the Bhupala, <laughs> the emperor, uh, if you want to call it that. Ultimately, in our Antarangam, I think Bhupala reigns pristine. Kamala Vijaya Karavidrita Kurangam Kauna Rasa Sudhar Navatarangam Kamalesha Vinuta Vrishabhaturangam Kamala Vadana Guru Guhantarangam Sada Chaleshwaram Bhavaye Chamatkara Purage Chaleshwaram Bhavaya